episode of Hack 1985, we're going to delve into the Macintosh SE. Uh, this particular project resulted from a little bit of difficulty that I had uh, getting the floppy drive to work on my particular SE. Um, had never had a problem before, but all of a sudden one day I went to go stick the diskette in the drive and it started making a terrible, horrible grinding noise. Um, and so, so the, switched the machine off and the story uh, begins from there basically. So what we have is this, your typical Macintosh SE, except for this one's the HD model, the hard drive model. And yes, this thing's rather heavy, believe it or not. Oh boy. Um, so we're gonna basically start with disassembling the system and pulling out the, uh, the floppy drive and uh, cleaning. And then we're gonna get into the disassembly of the drive ejection mechanism. And uh, from that point, we're gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble the drive ejection mechanism and replace some gearing and things like that. Because what I did not expect was that when this thing started making weird noises was that the actual drive ejection mechanism was grinding the gears to pieces, the teeth, off inside. Actually, it's the first time I've seen that. Um, I've seen the drive ejection mechanism on the floppy drive get a little bit um, jammed, even break a tooth off, but I've never seen it actually grind all the teeth off of a, a gear. So um, we're gonna show you how to fix that, uh, but it will require, like in this case, it will require having a second system around that you can pull good gears out of. Okay, so let's just get right into this. Let's start with a little bit of an explanation of um, the type of problem that we're seeing here. Basically, we stick a floppy diskette into the drive, and at this point, actually, we don't get the grinding anymore because all the teeth are gone. We get a little bit of a whining noise, and the diskette is unable to pop out. So after manually ejecting the diskette with a little paper clip, we're ready to get started on our project. So the first thing you're going to have to do is take apart your Mac so that ultimately you end up with the floppy drive removed. I'm not going to get into the full assembly of the Mac. Um, however, there is one thing that I would like to point out, and that is that you need to be very careful when removing the motherboard. Slide the motherboard up just a bit, little bit away from the front of the case and then angle it out from one side. Don't try to slide it all the way out the back or else you're going to break some of the components off the motherboard. It's not meant to be removed that way. So once you remove the floppy drive, that's where the fun will really begin. Basically there's a little black motor facing downward in the uh, left rear corner of the floppy disk drive. There's a screw towards the left rear side of that drive, uh, that, of that motor. And um, there's also a screw towards the upper right side of that motor. And both of those will have to be removed in order to get the mechanism um, completely out of the floppy drive assembly. Now once those screws have been removed, you can lift the ejection mechanism out. You'll see the little primary drive motor there on the bottom. And the rest of the gearing is underneath that metal plate. As you can see here, we have our original drive ejection mechanism and the bad primary drive gear here that I'm prying off of the motor. Now with all those little teeth uh, broken inside of that plastic housing, it's going to be very important that we remove uh, all of those little teeth. We don't want them to get stuck in the gearing again and cause the ejection mechanism to strip out again. So uh, it took me quite a while here. We're going to cut this short for this video, but those gears were um, all over the place in there and, and each had to be removed very carefully. Next you're going to want to remove this little primary drive motor. And this is what actually provides the power to lift the diskette out. It's a little bit difficult to get out. It's got three tabs holding it on, and you don't want to break those. If any one of them breaks, it will not secure, and uh, the gearing is not going to work properly. So, But with some finagling, you can get the little drive to pop out of place. And then once that's, that's actually out of place, uh, we're going to move on to the circuit board there. And uh, again, the little plastic tabs, be very careful with them, but if you kind of just gently push them aside you can lift that little circuit board right out and then finally to remove this complete assembly of uh, board motor and connector we're going to unroute the little wires uh, through the housing there which isn't very difficult to do and there you have it there's the complete assembly of connector uh, motor and board 
Now since in my case uh, we're actually going to be using the donor drives uh, injection mechanism housing, I've actually got to remove all of this stuff from the donor drive uh, mechanisms uh, housing as well. So we're going to go through the exact same process that we went through on the original drives injection mechanism housing, removing the, the board and the motor and all the wiring from the housing. And just so that you know, the reason why the original housing had to be replaced was because uh, it had it was a little bit loose with the tabs, and I didn't feel comfortable reusing that one. So I said, "Well, we'll just go ahead and reuse it, uh, or we'll just we'll just go ahead and use the drive ejection mechanism housing from the donor drive." But the donor drive's motor was very weak, so um, that was actually kind of the problem with the original draw uh, with the drive the donor drives. Uh, that was kind of the problem with the donor drive. So, once we got all of that stuff out of the donor drives, uh, drive ejection mechanism, housing, man, that's a tongue twister. Um, uh, I'm now able to swap in the um, motor, board, and uh, connector from the original drive. Okay, I know that sounds like it's really complicated, but basically I, re I needed to use that black plastic housing from the donor drive because it was in better condition. So we're getting this motor all mounted up inside of it. And uh, it takes a little while here. There's quite a bit of twisting of the wiring and so on and so on. Um, look down in there, you'll see a little bit of the oil that comes from the motor. That's normal. And this part here is, is very... Um, tricky. You got to look down in there and it, it is, I tried to show this in the video but there's little blades that have to line up, little metal blades that have to slip perfectly into place with that motherboard so you want to be careful with that. The motor is very simple, it just snaps right down in and um, you know we're almost there. Basically we've got to put a couple gears in, uh, the primary drive gear which actually technically would be the, the metal gear on the motor but uh, the first one coming off of that right there and then finally we're gonna put this last uh, gear inside of here as you can see here this one's in a uh, fairly good shape it the original one wasn't damaged this may even be the one from the original drive I can't remember which uh, gearbox it came out of but just kind of twist to make sure they're gonna hold up and then uh, we're uh, gonna put this little metal cover on here it kind of slips up underneath a couple tabs on the bottom and then snaps down this tab towards the end of the case here that it snaps down around is actually the reason why I used the ejection mechanism from the donor drive because that tab was a little bit loose on the original one so and then there we have it um, it's uh, all together and ready to be installed in the drive so first we're gonna connect the little connector back here and we're gonna kinda set it down be careful that uh, everything lines up properly there and then it's just a matter of putting the two screws back in, the one down towards the lower left or left rear of the drive and then the one towards the front right not really of the drive but of the drive ejection mechanism housing. And finally we're left with all the bits and pieces from uh, the donor drive, that's actually the housing from the original drive out of my Macintosh SEHD and then the motor from the donor drive uh, kind of bits and pieces from the whole entire project here which I actually will reassemble and um, just keep together just in case there's something in there I might be able to use again in the future. I keep a box full of these types of things. So after all that we're left with a completed floppy drive which we will now install into our Macintosh. For this test I'm just gonna hook the drive up without everything else assembled, power on the machine and make sure that it's able to read a floppy disk. Now this first floppy disk is just in case something goes horribly wrong as it is not even really a good floppy disk anyway. It's unreadable. At this point I'm just testing to make sure that the ejection mechanism is going to be able to unload the diskette. And we have success. It's not a good diskette so the system immediately ejects it out and we don't get any binding or noise so now I'm going to go ahead and grab an operating 
system disk and we're going to insert that and make sure it's able to read that and actually boot the system. Adjust here so you can see the screen. Oh, can't read it. Not too uncommon. We'll just reinsert it. Even in a good drive that can happen occasionally so you don't definitely don't want to go on that. And we see the little Happy Mac icon so we know that the floppy disk is loading. But uh, for the sake of being absolutely sure, we'll go ahead and just watch the operating system boot completely up to be sure that we haven't uh, thrown anything else off in this process and that everything is functioning properly. Now after the system completely boots up, we know that the drive is working properly. Uh, we can go ahead and shut the system down and go ahead and get uh, to assembling the system, getting everything back together. So with our rebuilt drive mechanism completed, um, my final thoughts are it was definitely worth about an hour's time investment. Uh, if you have a couple old Macintosh sitting around, even if both of them have bad floppy disk drives, good chance that between the two, you'll be able to create one working floppy disk drive and save another Mac from the heap, potentially. I do these projects for you guys or at least I make the video for you guys so if you're if you're finding these useful please let me know in the in the comments and uh, I will you know keep that in mind whenever I'm doing any other of these uh, projects in the future and and try to do videos of them as well but again it's for you guys so it's gonna be based on the feedback thanks for watching and uh, keep hacking like it's 1985